Hello, welcome to our PCS Grades weekly webinar. Today we are talking with US Transportation Command about all the PCS updates you need for this summer 2022. I'm Lizanne Lightfoot. I'm a Marine Corps spouse, mom of five kids, and a published author. We have lived in several different military bases around the world. And I'm happy not to be moving this summer, but we did most recently move in 2020. So I have lots of questions about what to expect this year. And this is my wonderful co-host, Tessa Robinson. Hello, hello, it's great to be back. I'm Tessa Robinson. I'm a guest content creator and webinar weekly host with the lovely Lizanne for PCS Grades. We are so excited today to have these unbelievable experts great resources at our fingertips. And we always, of course, encourage our audience participation. I know you have a lot of questions, especially for folks who are moving this year. So let's go ahead and get started with meeting our experts. Today we have Melissa Jordan, Division Chief Strategic Engagements, Defense Personal Property Management Office. The lovely Kristen Johnson Barnett, Public Affairs Specialist, Strategic Engagements, Defense Personal Property Management Office. These are long titles for a business card, you guys. <laughs> we also have Jason Middleton, Chief of the Personal Property Office of Europe, Defense Personal Property Management Office. And last but certainly not least, Daniel Martinez, Division Chief Systems, Defense Personal Property Management Office. So very first question, we're going to go around the horn. Melissa, we'll start with you. We want to know just a little bit about your background and what it is that that title uh, gives you to do for, tr for a transportation command. Huh. Okay, all the powers with the title, right? <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks again for having us. We're thrilled to be here, especially as we kick off moving season. I'm Alyssa Jordan, and I am the Chief of Strategic Engagements, as you can see across the, the banner there. And what that means is my team uh, engages in communication strategy, implementation tactics, including web domains, fact sheets, all sorts of products. And we also engage in training our personal property offices and our transportation professionals throughout uh, all of the services in DOD. Uh, we do stakeholder outreach with a lot of our family spouses, our industry partners, we meet with them on a weekly basis, and then some other governance meetings that we have within our DOD senior leadership tier. Uh, so yeah, I've been doing this for about a year and a half. Before that, I, uh, I've had about 12 years in civil service doing a communication strategy, stakeholder outreach, and leading change in other government organizations. And before that, I was in the Air Force for 24 years. So thanks again for having us. Amazing. We are so excited to have you with us today. Uh, Kristen, over to you. Tell us about yourself. Okay. Thank you for having me. So I'm Kristen Johnson Barnett. I have worked um, with our division for uh, probably about a year and a half. I'm relatively new to working for the, for the U.S. military, um, but I'm actually a military spouse as well, too. So I try to bring that unique perspective to the job here. Um, I, I work for Melissa um, and I manage a lot of our public relation materials. So putting together a lot of communication uh, materials for customers and um, especially anything that you see on the website. So any of our web pages, our web content, um, social media posts, and then um, any like handouts and flyers and things that you might get to, to let you know what's going on with your moves and what are the type of things you should pay attention to and, and, and get informed on. Well, we are anxious to hear your perspective. Thank you for being here. Jason, your turn. All righty. Well, greetings. I'm Jason Middleton from the Transcom DPMO team. And I've been a, a member of Transcom for about oh, just over five, year now, five years now. I'm a 23-year Air Force retiree. Uh, all 23 years as a part of the Air Force traffic management, or as most folks call it, the TMO career field. Uh, I'm currently sitting in beautiful Simbach, Germany, serving as the chief of the, the DPMO uh, UCOM team. So essentially, we're the transcom link um, for any issue within Europe, Africa, and Southwest Asia. So if you're, if you're headed our way, uh, please reach out and touch us. And I really mean that because I think uh, one of the things that we do as part of our weekly cadence is, is that uh, we randomly select customers and, and make, give them a call and, and just to find out exactly uh, how their particular move went. Uh, so we welcome the feedback and, and thanks for the participation. Absolutely. Thanks for being here, especially from Europe. We really appreciate you making time to do this. And Danny, over to you. Sure. Good afternoon. Good morning, depending on where you are. I'm um, Danny Martinez, and I've been with uh, 
the personal property program, uh, probably around 15 years or so. I've been part of various re-engineering efforts. I've been um, a career civil servant uh, for 19 years. Uh, and basically anything that has to do with whether it's a backend system that uh, the traffic management offices use or if, if the defense personal property system, which most of you have probably touched over the last 10 years, um, I'm responsible for uh, developing and improving those programs and also uh, any other programs such as one that I'll talk about today, which is our new customer satisfaction survey um, software initiative uh, that's outside of DPS actually. Um, so really that's, that's what I do. And, you know, a lot of what you hear today I've been involved in, which is a uh, major, you know, reform efforts that we're uh, implementing and have been for many years actually. Um, but really taking a, taking a, an accelerated pace here recently uh, to improve the program for our DOD customers. Amazing. Happy to be here. We're ecstatic that you're all here. I know Lizanne is going to start us off with some questions, but again, for our audience that's watching, please, please, please engage. Please ask questions. Um, that we have a wealth of resources here to help you make your move a little easier this summer. Lizanne, what are we going to ask first? Absolutely. I have questions, but I do want to first start off with some shout outs and some thanks to our listeners. We have Daniela thanking everyone for coming in today and sharing this information. Uh, we have Fort Carson represented. So those of you who are watching from around the country, you know, please just tell us where you're tuning in from and whether or not you're moving this year. I saw Jen. Jen is a longtime listener, and she said this is her last time watching from JVLM. So we wish you a wonderful PCS this summer and hope that it all goes smoothly. But on that note, we all know that last year's PCS season was very much complicated by supply chain issues and labor shortages, which are no stranger to all of us now. But we are very curious to hear from Transcom are there updates on how these things will affect us in 2022? And um, I think we're going to ask Melissa to answer how these issues can affect us this summer. Yeah, thanks so much, Lizanne. Um, so you, you hit it right on the head. Uh, we are going into year three of our COVID environment, uh, operating in a COVID environment. And while we have seen a lot of that relaxed uh, masks and protective measures um, in place, we are seeing the same amount of capacity issues, if not more, in the environment. And um, this is a national shortage, the supply chain congestion, the labor shortage, all of those issues that we saw last year, they are continuing. And uh, it is not just DOD, of course. Uh, Brigadier General Joel Safranik mm -hmm. is our director at our Defense Personal Property Management Office, and he likes to use the analogy if you go to the commissary or the grocery store, if there's civilians listening, uh, or you go to Target and you see something uh, on the shelf that you or shelf that you, um, or if you pr purchase something from Amazon and there's a delay for the first time in several years, I just got a note on Amazon that uh, my shipment was going to be delayed. I think it was coffee and tea, right? Mm -hmm. So we are seeing that nationwide. And the same is true for our industry partners. Uh, they are uh, giving us a lot of feedback. We've been working with them as early as January and then really February in earnest on getting analysis uh, from each analyses from our, our uh, transportation service providers to give us an idea from our industry partners of what they're facing and what they're looking ahead uh, you know, for the moving season. So we've really approached uh, the how to mitigate the impact to customers in three different ways. The first uh, activity that we're engaging in is working with our industry partners, like I said, talking to them about what their capacity issues are, their labor, they're, they're having a hard time getting uh, labor uh, in, in place. And so we're asking them to stay in touch with customers and most importantly, only accept shipments that they can service. Last year, we saw a lot of shipments that transportation service providers picked up because they thought that they could support them. And then they realized there were so many other uh, issues, factors coming at them, such as the labor shortage or uh, supply chain congestion, that they had to uh, disappoint and, and put uh, service members and families, uh, all customers in, in a position where they had to make other plans. So we're really encouraging those industry partners to stay in touch with us about what their capacity issues and limitations are. And at the same time, only accept shipments that they can they can be sure that they can handle 
And at the same time, to give those industry partners a little bit more ease, we're extending the transit times for peak season. So we have a bit of an extension of those transit times, and um, we encourage customers uh, to make sure that they've packed accordingly. I'll get to that in a second. So that's for the first part, is engaging with our industry partners and staying in touch with them on, on their limitations. The second issue is the services. So DPMO, Transcom, we work hand in hand with our military services. And those services are telling us that they see the need for orders to be cut. I saw a chat here that someone just came in about orders being uh, cut on time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really important. And I see Stacy Greer, still no order, 60 days from report. So what we're doing is we've been working with the services and asking them to be as proactive as possible in getting their their orders um, issued to their service members moving. The service, services have also put in some goals, uh, maybe not limitations, but to goals on how many service members should move in a given week to make sure that they don't overload the private industry uh, supply chain and moving industry uh, and over limit their capacity. And then we also um, see that each service, military service, has been giving a lot more extension. So, uh, Stacy, I saw in your chat that you're worried that you 60 days out and you don't have orders. I don't know what your service is, but most services have put in place a little bit more flex on either side of your report no later than date. So if your report no later than date is 30 June, most military services, I can't say all, but most of them have given you a, a 15 to 30 day slip on either side. So you can slide that a little bit. Um, so that's what we're working with the services uh, to make sure that they, and this is also a personnel issue, not just a logistics issue. It's a logistics solution, but definitely a personnel issue. So we're working hand in hand with those communities to communicate industry limitations and to see how we can support. And then of course, the final and most important contact that we have is with our customers. So our communication touch points with our customers are varied and Kristen will go into that a, lot, a little bit later in detail, but essentially we're encouraging um, customers to A, uh, get, get in line right away. If soon as you get your orders, contact your transportation office for a counseling appointment, get into DPS, who's managed by, uh, which is managed by Danny's team to get your shipment scheduled. If you have your orders in hand more than three days, then you probably are behind the power curve. I was just out at the San, I'm sorry, at the um, Peterson Air Force Base Colorado Springs Joint Personal Property Shipping Office last week. Had the pleasure of visiting the, their team, and they are managing the shipment. There's a lot coming in. There are delays, and they're working hand in hand with those customers. So reach out to your transportation office, and if you're not getting the shipment date that you're looking for within the seven day spread window policy then essentially invoke your chain of command, ask for help for a little bit of ease in your report no later than date. If you're clearing housing, there might be something that your chain of command can help you with that. If you're closing on a house, ask for a little bit of help or slip and talk with your transportation office, your commanders, your chain of command. Um, Brigadier General Safranik, again, to quote him, he said, this moving season now more than ever, uh, we are doing what we can to support industry, mitigate the impact to customers, but we also know that this is a commander's issue at this point. Uh, so yeah, so that's what we're, we're doing. It's not, uh, we don't have a crystal ball, but we're doing the best uh, to make sure all of our personal property offices are staying in contact with customers and reach out for help on, on all those points if, if you need it. Absolutely. Melissa, thank you. We do appreciate your attentiveness and awareness of these problems. I know that there isn't always a quick fix or an easy solution, but it sounds like one of the options you're recommending is to work with your current chain of command and you're gaining chain of command to negotiate or discuss those report dates um, and then to, to keep it to the local offices as well. Is that correct? Absolutely, Lizanne. So they, these customers have their own responsibility to make sure that they're organized, their house is clean, ready for the packers to pick up. Uh, they need to be proactive when they get their orders, orders scheduled. But yes, that chain of command and also the moving companies and the transportation offices, those are their primary contact points and making sure they stay in touch with all of those entities will really help them with a better move, hopefully this, this season. So, all right, thanks. excellent. And I, know I we wanted have to let you 
lot to cover, uh, Melissa, but I do want to just ask, ask a quick follow-up question from mm -hmm. Ashley. Sure. Are the labor shortages affecting OCONUS to OCONUS move? They are. Yes, yes, they are. Um, and I, when I talk to the uh, the GIPSO, Joint Personal Property Officer Shipping Office out in uh, Colorado Springs last week, I was hearing from uh, the director and his team that the international uh, shipments are being affected and they're paying very close attention to that. There's not necessarily a priority over it, over domestic shipments, but the issue with the international shipments is we see a lot of supply chain issues, labor issues, fuel costs, a lot of issues that affect our overseas host nations in different ways than they affect us. And of course, if they affect our host nation labor force, then they're going to affect the moving companies that support our, our service members, customers, uh, families over there. And so it is, we are seeing it. And what we're doing is paying close attention to make sure that those international shipment times um, are adhered to. And then if they cannot be, then we, we work um, with those transportation service providers. And I will say it's, it's not, I don't have the data in front of me, but if there is an overseas shipment issue and the, the service provider can't provide the services needed, or if there's a delay on the international shipping time on this side, you do have the option as customers to file an inconvenience claim to make sure that you have a little bit of uh, coverage if you have to pick up certain items if your things aren't delivered on time. Yeah. Wonderful. Great, thanks for the question. Of course. Uh, Jason, we're gonna move over to you now. There are always small changes to PCS rules and policies every year, we know this. Um, what changes do you want military families to be aware of this year? All right, great question. I mean, we've made several impactful policy changes that are currently in effect for this particular uh, moving season. So some of the new changes include um, electronic inventories. We've all experienced difficulties with deciphering those the manual inventory sheets that it seems like we've been using forever. Well, great news. Um, you'll be seeing more moving companies offering electronic inventories, which are a bit easier to read. And most importantly, you can save them to your computer or your mobile phone. While we didn't mandate that our industry partners utilize electronic inventories for this particular uh, 2022 movement season, we're highly encouraging them. And you can expect that um, next year, next movement season, we'll be mandating um, the uh, electronic inventories. And also, it's going to be a requirement for the, the global household goods contract. So the next uh, impactful change that we've had are automatic reways. So if you if your pre-move survey estimate weight estimate uh, estimates that your shipment would be like close to 90 percent of your weight allowance or greater, then the Defense Personal Property System DPS will send an automatic email informing you, your moving company, and the local transportation office that 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 they should automatically reweigh your shipment right before they conduct conduct the delivery. So that's important because previously. It was an automatic or a reway had to take place because either the customer or the transportation office requested it. So what we've in, implemented is that we're going to go and move forward and do an automatic reway on it. Okay. So this should this should ensure that the shipment weight is accurate before anyone gets charged, right? We are especially sensitive to some of our junior service members. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they don't go overweight. So what we're also going to do is is that we want to definitely want to make sure that they're that they're that they're taken care of. So moving companies will be prompted to to perform an automatic reway for E for grades E1 through E5 shipments greater than with shipments greater than 4000 pounds and E6s and above. OK, which includes O1s and, 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 and W1s um, through O10 and W5s. OK, for their shipments, it's going to be greater than 7000 pounds. Another impactful change is moving companies and the orig origin agent contact. What we've heard from our customers is that they get so many emails, they don't, they don't know exactly who the major or the, the primary point of contact is. So what we've mandated to our industry partners is to make absolutely sure that our customers know. And one of the ways to do that is that they're going to be sending, they will send our customers an automatic email that will determine that will indicate exactly who their origin agent is or their move management movement manager is. Okay. And it's going to also be listed in DPS. So all the point of contacts will be available uh, in DPS and will be available for, for you to, to, to contact those folks. Okay. 
And as I mentioned, DPS will automatically email the points of contact to you. Okay. Another, another great change is the reduced risk of personal, personally identifiable information, PII leaks. So what we've done is we've partnered with U.S. Customs and Border Protection to minimize, in many cases, eliminate exposure of customers' personally identifiable information, PII, in their household goods shipment. Okay. This, in, this involves really removing social security numbers from personal property documents and industry facing screens, screens. So within DPS, we operate where we've given industry uh, certain screens within DPS. So what we've discovered is not only should we remove PII from the documents, but we should also ensure that they're not industry or any prior eyes are not able to see uh, social security numbers and PII within the defense personal property system. Okay. So we're going to try to, we're trying to reduce PII where possible, but they're going to, there, there will be opportunities where you, you still will have to provide a, a social security number. For instance, um, you're, if you're shipping, uh, alcohol from Germany to CONUS, right? That's still a requirement that, um, your social security number, for instance, be on the documents itself, unfortunately. But we're still working with the Customs and Border Protection to do what we can to minimize it. Okay. And another impactful change is the seven-day schedule window, also known as spread dates. You might have heard that. It refers to a seven-day window during which your moving company is required to pick up your shipment. Okay. So we've changed how, we, how you input your request in DPS. Essentially, now you enter in the latest pickup date, then, T then DPS will calculate the earliest pickup date and create a seven-day window from which a moving company is required. They're going to be mandated to use to schedule your official pickup date. So I want to give you an for example. So if, if any of you, if you have, if you've got your, 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 your cell phone handy and you've got a, or you've got a calendar handy, uh, I'll give you an example. So as I mentioned, you've got your seven day window is calculated from the latest pickup date you request in DPS. So if you've entered, so if you enter Wednesday, the 20th of April, 22, as your latest pickup date, your seven day window will be from Thursday, 14 April to eight to, to 20 April. So once you enter your latest pickup date, DPS will automatically update the earliest pickup date field. DPS would also ask you, ask you for your desired pickup date, which can be any date in between that 14 and 20 April date that I, dates that I, that I mentioned earlier. And the signed move, moving company will do their best to accommodate your request. But they'll have that option to choose any date within that seven day window. However, and this is very important, they cannot choose a weekend in this case, in the case that I just gave you, say the 16th and the 17th of April, without your approval, right? So if you approve, you also want to contact your transportation office so that they may, so that they are aware um, that you're going to be moving on that, say that weekend or that holiday, because they may not be able to support um, your move with a QA inspector on that weekend or holiday. And, and ultimately, I mean, the, the goal of this policy is to give you more certainty during your scheduling process and a better chance of securing a date, a date close to or on the date you desire. So we've already started working on significant changes for next year. So please stay tuned. Yeah, that's very exciting. I think you're getting a lot of positive feedback from our viewers that we appreciate these updates and these changes for sure. Um, I saw Jen commenting that uh, you said there was going to be an update with the way that the contacts were listed so that people have a little bit more clarity on who to contact. And she <laughs> said in her case, they've got three different shipments and a different point of contact for each one. So absolutely, the more clarity, the better. Um, right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're, we're listening to uh, all of our customers and that, and I think that's that's I think that's what's great is that we're getting this 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 constant feedback and we're making those 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 changes that have a direct impact on our customers. Absolutely. And I do want to bring up another question here that I'm not sure we're going to cover in our future 
conversation, but um, this is from Marissa out at Fort Carson. Um, you mentioned you'd spoken to Colorado Springs recently, Melissa, and she said a lot of the Army families are being asked to pay out of pocket with that government travel card, that charge card, and the, the limit on the credit card doesn't even cover what it costs to move yourselves or move a family. And I see that there has been several responses to that. So does anyone on the team want to address that situation? Yes, I can try to take that. Um, we we are seeing, uh, because of the capacity issues, we are seeing that our uh, personal property offices are encouraging pers personally procured moves. Uh, basically, a personally procured move is what you know as a ditty, do-it-yourself move. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, to alleviate um, for the whatever, for whatever reason, the seven day window isn't met or you, you have to move sooner. Uh, and so that is also reimbursable now through government travel cards. And there is a, a way for you to request an advance through your personnel office or your chain of command and to get an advance to pay for your PPM. And, uh, uh, and Danny has a lot of information on that. Danny, you're free to add to that. But I will say that if you want to send Lizanne your information or Tammy uh, backstage catching everything, go ahead and just send us your, your name and contact information and I can connect you to our GYPSO chief out at uh, Colorado Springs to make sure that, they, that you have access to the best advice possible. Yeah. That would be wonderful. We really appreciate that. You bet. See, this is why we do these webinars. It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yay. Yes. Connecting people with resources and help. The best. Hey, hey Tessa, can I add something? Um, I think we've had, I think it was Ashley that had a question on the on the um, capacity, the capacity constraints, possible capacity constraints um, um, international. And I think what she mentioned was CONUS, O CONUS to O CONUS. And she said specifically Germany to Germany. So right now we're not seeing we're not seeing m many not not too much capacity constraints here in Germany from a Germany to Germany move. Um, so um, if she's in Germany and she's seeing that or she's not getting she's not getting what she needs, please uh, reach out to a local transportation office. Um, if you're if you still not getting what you need, please. Um, hey, you as I mentioned earlier, reach out and touch me and I'll see what I can do. Awesome, thank you. All right, so I wanna bring Daniel in here. I know that we referred to you once, but you're gonna get your moment in the spotlight here because we are gonna talk about those customer satisfaction surveys. These have always been such an important part of the moving process. And I know that my family has probably been the, the bad ones that didn't bother to fill them out because it was just another piece of paper and just one more task to do at the end of a really long move. So this has been an ongoing issue in the industry that people just aren't taking the time to fill them out. And Daniel, what do you want to tell us about those customer satisfaction surveys and what updates are we going to see on them this year? Sure. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So definitely customer satisfaction surveys is not uh, something that anybody gets excited about. Uh, but <laughs> what I can tell you is this, uh, this has been a significant uh, change that we that we made in this program probably around eight years ago. We used to be a low cost program, which, you know, obviously that was part of the reason why we had challenges in the House of Goods program. And the survey in the Defense Personal Property Program actually makes up 70 percent of the ranking of each of the providers that, that they get. Mm -hmm. uh, so it really makes a difference. I'll start by saying that the feedback that we either get or don't get on these surveys is directly used to determine revenue and how many, uh, how much more business each TSP or transportation service provider receives. So definitely want to start by saying that. Uh, all that being said, I acknowledge that uh, it's not something anybody looks forward to. And so I'm happy to announce here that uh, we definitely uh, looked at what is a commercial best process for capturing surveys. And we've launched uh, an entirely new process, um, you know, that replaces our, our electronic process uh, with an even better electronic process. So we used to require customers to log back into the defense personal property system mm -hmm. to take a survey after their shipment was delivered. And what we're doing now is we've broken up the surveys and we're, we're timing it based on uh, 
based on when somebody completes an activity in the real world. And that's when we're sending a survey by text or email to the email address or phone number that's in the DPS system. Uh, this actually began for any shipments that are picking up uh, 30 April of this year or later. So anybody who picked up before that, we still unfortunately have to use the, the previous process. Uh, but for anybody who's picking up 30 April or later, uh, what will happen, we're calling these mini surveys. And so, for example, um, right after you complete your counseling, uh, you will receive uh, several days uh, after you'll receive a survey text message an email it'll bring up a short survey all of these surveys are five questions or less and they include uh like emojis you know the smiley faces with color coding and it'll allow you to quickly on a mobile device uh or on a pc or tablet complete uh your feedback uh for us the uh, rest of the mini surveys uh, occur after your shipment picks up and then you get a third one after your shipment delivers and then if you have a loss and damage claim, you'll receive a survey uh, about 75 days after your, your claim is submitted. And then if you have to engage the military claims office, you're not able to settle your claim, we'll send you another survey on the military claims office support another 75 days after that. Uh, we'll continue to leave these survey links open for 90 days from the first time, one that you receive. So, and then you'll continue to receive reminders about, for example, your counseling. Tell us about your counseling. Uh, tell us about your pickup day, uh, et cetera. Each of these short surveys, uh, as I indicated, have the uh, the smiley faces or the frown uh, frowny faces. And it also includes an option for you to enter free text. So if you wanna describe um, something that was good or something that was bad, uh, you have the option to provide that input again on a mobile device or on a PC. Um, this the key here is that uh, the surveys that involve your pickup and your delivery are directly used again to provide the rating for the transportation service provider so uh, really looking forward to an increased response rate because that's been one of our challenges and that that response will directly impact uh, their future business as well as uh, their ability to continue to do business with us um, and in addition to that um, as uh, mr middleton indicated in collaboration with the, the sites that are out there, the transportation offices, we like to hear directly from customers. So those customer comments, whether it's a random phone call that he referred to, uh, to a customer or reviewing customer comments, uh, which is done at various levels, whether it's a transportation office or a headquarters, uh, there are folks who review these comments and use those comments to inform our business rules. So as we look at our 2023, business rule changes and, and some of the past changes that we've made, even some of the changes that we rolled into the global house of goods contract, we're all informed by customer comments, um, which we've, we've been capturing since 2010. Um, so, but really this new initiative, we're hoping this will take off and we're going to double our response rates. Uh, and of course I can't, uh, leave, uh, I can't leave this unstated. If you're having an immediate issue, you know, during your move, we understand that the survey process is not real time. It's more of an after the fact. So just as a reminder, you know, make sure that you contact your transportation office uh, so that they can address any issues that you have immediately. Um, and so really, uh, other than that, I, I will kind of circle back and refer to a couple of items that were made on the systems front. I saw a question about electronic inventories. And then uh, I think there was another question about different points of contact. So really uh, acknowledge that in our current program, we have over 900 transportation service providers. And so when you have an, an unaccompanied baggage, household goods, non-temporary storage shipment, that's kind of the nature of our program right now. So that is one of the reasons why we're moving towards the global household goods contract, just to... Mm -hmm kind of reemphasize that until we uh, can do so on, um, you know, unfortunately there will be situations where you have different points of contact on the electronic inventories. I'll just go ahead and say that uh, right now that that is becoming more of an industry standard. And uh, as Mr. Middleton indicated right now, it is highly encouraged and will 
and the plan is to mandate the use of electronic inventories for 2023. And this is leading up to the global house of goods contract where it really will be a requirement. So what we're trying to do is to kind of get the small businesses used to this, the ones maybe who aren't using this at this point in time. And, uh, you know, the bottom line, as you heard, it's just so much easier to read an electronic inventory. Uh, and of course we have rules in place that prevent any abuse of that. So you have to still, you have to still have the option to disagree, for example, with comments in the inventory and all of that information has to be available to anyone who has that opportunity or is presented with the opportunity for an electronic uh, inventory. And uh, other than that, uh, those that's really what I have to say on the customer survey and really excited. So far, early results show that we did jump from about a 15% response rate to a 30% response rate, but it is still pretty early because customers have 90 days to complete those surveys. Uh, so uh, we'll continue to monitor that, but really excited about what this brings to the department and for customers. Yeah, Danny, I think those are really exciting changes. And that is a survey that I would probably actually take the time to fill out if it's only five questions and it's something I can do on my phone and it's, you know, just at the appropriate time. I really like all of those changes that you mentioned. Uh, we did have two questions come in about that process. One was, who are these survey questions going to? Is it the active duty service member or the spouse? Because in many cases, the spouse is more likely to fill it out. So is there any way to adjust that point of contact? Yes, uh, I would. I would. Right now, we're using the official email addresses and phone numbers that are in DPS, in the Defense Personal Property System. In many cases, there is a spouse email already in there. And so mm -hmm. they will receive the, the email and of course, depending on if it's a CONUS to CONUS or OCONUS, they may not receive a text message, an SMS, uh, but we'll use whatever is in DPS as an official record. Of course, we want to protect the integrity of the survey. We want to make sure only the customer or their spouse is taking the survey. So if there's a change and, and uh, somebody wants to have it at a different email, I would ask them to log into DPS. Uh, or contact their transportation office if they're not able to do that. And the transportation office can update DPS for them. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and then there was another question here from Courtney. Uh, what if you have two different moving companies on each end of the move? Does the survey differentiate between those two companies so that you could give them different comments and feedback? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it actually does. The survey is a six question survey. And the questions that are in there um, call out service at the origin and service at the destination. Now, even in our current program, uh, there is a single responsible provider for the entire move. Even if they sub out to different companies on either end, ultimately they're responsible for the whole thing. However, we do acknowledge that uh, the survey uh, should look at all aspects of the experience. And in fact, um, it's written in the way that it is so that the responsible provider can see where they may have good scores and bad scores. So as an example, if, if somebody had an average experience but had a really poor experience at origin and a good experience at destination, then the provider can start to see a trend and perhaps look to work with a different uh, subcontractor at that uh, installation. Uh, as if they're reviewing the survey feedback, which they all should be because it affects their revenue. Awesome. Thank you so much for answering that. There is so much more information out there now than <laughs> there was 15, 20 years ago. I think when Zan, when we started moving, um, I know first when we moved to Guam, it was just an absolute disaster. I had no idea what to expect. I didn't pack things like, you know, a shower curtain to have, but I had winter clothes. Not my best move. Um, so I want to talk to the ladies, Melissa and Kristen, tell us about the new websites you've launched with moving resources for military. Yeah. Um, I'll start just by responding to what you just said, uh, Jeanette, that the, there's a lot more information out there now than there was before. 
And uh, a few years ago, there there was a, the beginning of a huge reform effort to inform and educate stakeholders. That's part of our um, reform strategy for personal property enterprise. And we consider customers stakeholders. We don't consider customers audiences where we talk at customers, but we talk with them and communicate with them, such as forums like this. And uh, under congressional approval, we were allowed um, to build out our transportation command shop at personal property office uh, to bring in some communication professional professionals. Uh, that's me, uh, Kristen. Uh, Mike Quinn is in the back, uh, running uh, background chat. And so there, there are others on the staff and they partner with our transportation professionals who are on staff. And so it's just a really terrific uh, pairing and partnership. And we just go exponentially further now with all of our content. Uh, Mr. Yudi does our fact sheets. And so we have a huge amount of uh, collaborative support now to better, uh, more proactively communicate with stakeholders, especially customers. And so we're really thrilled to be able to make this transition to the Military One Source and all of our other Con products. I'm going to hand that over to Kristen. I just want to say that Kristen mentioned before that she works for me. We often feel like we work for Kristen because she's got a vision and she's worked with the Office of Secretary of Defense, the Military One Source team for several months to make this website really useful and easily navigatable. And I also want to just put a get a shout out there to Courtney Smith, who just wrote that you were a brand new mill uh, spouse. So welcome to the military community. Uh, I think you'll hear from Kristen. She's a fairly new military spouse, less than five years maybe, but being a new military spouse and you being plugged in and getting going out and finding the information and engaging with, with us is really terrific. And I hope there are more of you like that in your community. So with that, I will turn it over to Kristen to get us into the really uh, important things about how to go find this information. Kristen? Yeah, thank you, Melissa. So as Melissa mentioned, we're now housed over on Military One Source. We used to have um, our website over on move.mil um, was our, our general information hub. But in November of 2021, we decided to close that down and migrate everything over to Military One Source. We did this because Military One Source already had a lot of information on relocation, you know, everything from moving your stuff to moving your family and getting you know, yourself set up in your new community and maybe finding a new job for your spouse. So we thought it would be really great to, to have a one-stop shop for everything. So you go to one website and you can find everything that you would need for your move. Um, now, if you're looking now, Military One Source is a rather big site. You know, it, it covers all kinds of things other than just moving. You know, you can go there to get information on filing your taxes or planning a vacation. Um, so if you're coming over to the site and you're looking for us, you're specifically going to want to look under the moving and housing section. And our page is called moving your personal property. That's our new landing page. And it has a plethora of all kinds of information that you might need in regards to shipping your stuff. Uh, we have two main pages off of there that you would find the majority of the, the content is housed under. The first page is our customer service page. And again, this would be a great place to go to get any information on who you would need to contact for your move. So you can find your local transportation office, um, a specific service branch office you might be looking for, uh, the DPS help desk line, just kind of any, any uh, of the different offices and, and support services you might need. You can find connections for them under our customer service page. And then our resources page is um, got a, a ton of all kinds of different information on moving. We've got FAQs, so frequently asked questions. We've got videos. Uh, we've got really nice articles called moving guides that'll walk you through every step of the moving process. So everything from tips on how to prepare for the packers to come to what happens on the loading and the delivery days to how to file a claim and all of the different types of uh uh, things you might know in regards to filing a claim, like the different timelines and things that you need to meet and, and, and just kind of walking through through that whole thing from beginning all the way to the end. Um, and one of the other uh, big resources that we have over on our, on our page that we've added a lot more to this particular moving season is fact sheets. And Melissa mentioned that we have a colleague on our team who's developed a bunch of fact sheets. We have about a dozen new fact sheets this year if you want to go check them out. So they're little one page handouts that you can print out or you can just view on your phone or your computer. 
and they're going to give you a quick snapshot of a particular topic area that you might be interested in. They cover all kinds of things. The, they, we, they cover the new seven day spread, the, the seven day uh, window scheduling thing that Jason talked about earlier um, and, and all of the different details in regards to how that works. Um, we have ones on just filing an inconvenience claim in case your um, your delivery doesn't make it in time or one on how to file a regular uh, lost or damaged claim. Um, we also have some new ones on how to handle uh, a situation where maybe mold got into your to your shipment. So what would you need to know specifically in handling something like that? And then, you know, we talked about if you have to do a Diddy move, a personally procured move is what it's called. Um, what are some of the ins and the outs of what you would need to know in regards to that? So we really encourage people to come over to our website and check out all of those new resources. Um, we're going to be continuing to add more as things change and they evolve. We, we create new content. We upload it there. Um, and so just keep checking back um, and seeing all of the, the fun new tools that we have for you. And again, you can find us at the, if you don't want to go uh, to the main page and have to find us all the way through, you can easily find us by just going to typing into your computer, militaryonesource.mil forward slash personal property. And that'll take you right to our landing page. Wonderful. Thank you. What a great resource for our, our listeners and our viewers. All right, folks. It's time for my second favorite section of the uh, of the webinar. It is time for the hot seat. And I believe rapid fire is about to begin. And Jason, you're getting voluntold to do this. <laughs> so congrats. That's it. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> All the way from Germany. Jason, top three things military families should do before movers arrive on site. Go. All right. Update your contact information in DPS. Multiple contacts and cell phones to addresses, just as much information as possible to ensure that your 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 mover has a way to contact you or the transportation office has a way. Uh, ensure your residence is residence or pickup location is tight, organized and tidy. Right. Set aside. Next, set aside anything that you that you do not want packed. Right. So that's creating that separate room. Right. And lock the door. So make sure you put those passports and all of the, those the, those important documents in that room and ensure you put tape around it, whatever you need to do to keep those packers out. Right. Disassemble and clean all outdoor items, swing sets, um, sheds, things of that nature, and remove um, a lot of your property from, like, say, the attics and the crawl spaces and storage areas, things of that nature. OK. Remove the picture frames from the walls, right? That's important. Um, prepare drawer, drawers and, and toy bins for packing by placing, like, um, by actually put, placing them in resealable plastic bags in the drawer itself. And that way the packers can just pick everything up and put it in boxes, okay? Drain your motorcycle if you have one of gasoline. Disconnect the battery tape and, and tape the ends with, elect with electrical tape, okay, to prevent sparking. Take photos and videos of your goods as a record of anything that you own and provide evidence of condition and working status. So, I mean, I mean technology, yes, let's use technology. So take those, those photos and those videos of all your items um, of value and make sure that you do not put them in the shipment, right? Make sure you take them with you, okay? Obtain appraisals of your high value items and antiques. And once again, don't put them in the shipment, okay? For a complete list of responsibilities, uh, we've got on our Transcom website, then um, I'll read off the, 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 the URL is www.ustranscom.mil slash DTR slash part P-A-R-T dash dash I-V uh, slash DTR. So maybe one of our folks will put it in the uh, in the chat box. Okay, so that, so actually that that particular pamphlet is is called the It's Your Move It's Your Move Armed Forces pamphlet, and we've got a It's Your Move pamphlet for um, Department of Defense civilians. All right, awesome. That's a lot of things to do, though. <laughs> All right, next up, what are the most important items that should be listed on your personal inventory? The high value items, like sentimental items. Definitely got to make sure and have those items listed itself. Okay, um, anything that will not go in a box, uh, you want to have that on your personal inventory. Also, once again, you want to create your own photo inventory. Great way to make a record of everything that you have. You just go into the kitchen, for instance, and open up the cabinets 
um, and just start taking pictures of all of your items. Shouldn't take no more than an hour for the average house for you to just go through and take pictures of all the items. When it's time for you to make a, take a, make a claim, um, uh, a picture's worth a thousand words, right? Pretty hard to dispute. All right, next up, you mentioned locking the door. If you can't lock the door to hide away the goods that are do not pack, preferred method for staging a do not pack area. Okay, place the items in the location. If you place the items in the location, just away from the packers. I think that's more, that's the most important, such as in a, well, I mentioned a lock room, closet, or your vehicle, for instance, mm -hmm. right? Just mark the area, do not pack, and put a sign, put a, put a little sign, do not pack on it, right? You want to make sure the packers and your family are aware of that particular do not pack area. So that's, that mean it's important. Those are, that, those are going to be those documents that are important for you to hand carry. Right, like your car keys, because you definitely don't want your car keys to end up in a moving box, right? That makes sense. All right, what do you have to do or inspect before signing any paperwork on your packout day? Okay, so the, mov the movers will identify any pre-existing pre damage, such as dings and dents and scratches on the inventory form. Ensure their description is accurate. That's up to you, right? Ensure is accurate. If not, annotate your concerns on the inventory and or the pack out documents itself, okay? For valuable items, ensure the inventory specifies the make, model, serial number of the items. Generic labels like electronics, stuff, TV, right? Should be a red flag to you that stop the pack, stop everything and make sure that it's accurate, okay? And oh, for you, for you professional gamers, if you have internal components in your gaming PC that are valuable, right, those mm -hmm. NVIDIA cards, ensure your moving company understands that those items are valuable. Once again, take photos and document, 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 okay? If they miss something, you can request that they unpack the item so that you can obtain specific details on the inventory. So don't be afraid to just say, stop. I want to I want to go back and take a look at those items because we want to make absolutely sure that they're registered on the inventory. OK, if you disagree with the inventory, you can also write it in the remarks section. And don't be afraid. Once again, don't be afraid to call your transportation office. Stop. Call your transportation office and, and have them and ask that a QA inspector come out and visit. OK, and do not sign the inventory until you understand and agree with everything that's listed. Important. If you disagree, just make sure and write it down once again in the remarks section. Right. Spending that, that few those few extra minutes reviewing the inventory sheets on the front end will save you a lot of a lot of, of heartache um, at the delivery itself. OK. Awesome. Examine, examine your residence for any real property damage. This is the part that I added out. I think is important, right? Before, before those packers leave your residence, please walk around your residence and make absolutely sure there's been no real property damage, right? Mm -hmm. If there's any damage there, please make absolutely sure that you annotate the documents appropriately. And one last thing, I mean, one, and I think this goes back to some of the impactful changes that we've had. Um, one of the changes is, is that we've required your movers to lay down floor coverings in those high traffic areas, right? So you want to make sure that if you've got finished floors and things of that nature, you want to make sure that they have some sort of floor coverings in order to put down in order to, um, to save your floor. Absolutely. All very good points and very good advice. And we are getting ready to wrap up. So if you guys have some final questions or final comments for this crack team of Transcom representatives, then please, you can either type them here now while we're live, or if you're watching this on the replay, you can share your questions and we will try to get back to you as much as we can. So Tessa, are there any other questions from the chat that you wanted to address? I think Fred just asked a question. What does a member do if he doesn't agree with inventory conditions? It's a great question, Fred. I can I could take that. And if you do, if the if the member does not agree with what's annotated on the inventory, stop the pack 
give your local transportation office a call. Have them send, in, send a, a QC inspector out there. Um, also, annotate the documents. If you feel like uh, your items were not accurately uh, indicated, please just annotate the documents that um, on, on the items with the items that you disagree with. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, and I did and I'll see throw in too that uh, that Jason gave a lot of good information. I think you've been putting it in the chat here, but go check out our military one source pages. We have a, all those tips are available on uh, various different pages on our under our various different resources that we have on our web pages. So be free, feel free to go check out all of our different articles that we have that would spell that all out for you. Yeah, and we are dropping most of them into the chat right now. So again, if you're watching it live, scroll through those comments. If you're watching on the replay, look at all the links that are at the beginning and you'll see tons of useful resources. So I am super impressed with all that you guys have shared with us today. And there are some really cool upgrades coming this year. So it's better news than I had expected. And I'm pretty excited about all these changes that you're making. Terrific. Thanks so much for having us. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for being here, Melissa, Kristen, Danny, and of course, Jason. Thank you all. And especially thanks for taking the hot seat, Jason. <laughs> and Liz Ann, do you want to tell them our next webinar? We're taking a week off. I think in the summertime, we're doing every other week. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so we won't be back until June 21st, and we're talking about PCS claims, how to prevent them, and how to file for claim reimbursement. So super important question for everyone that's moving, and you're all going to want to tune back in on June 21st. And until then, thanks again, guys. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks.